What's up you guys, Charlie here from MA Performance and in today's video, we're doing some work on the Evo 10. As you guys know, we're building this car into a street slash take it to the track and have some fun car. So in today's build, we're gonna be replacing a lot of the suspension components with some upgraded stuff from our friends over at Whiteline. Huge shout out to them for supplying the parts for today's build. Really excited to get this stuff in the car. Today we're putting in some sway bars, end links, and a few other miscellaneous things. I mean, as you guys can see, these are pretty much pretty much toast at this point, not supposed to be able to do that. So nonetheless, I'm actually super, super busy today. So Tiny's actually just gonna be taking care of the install for me. I'm really glad that he's obviously got the knowledge to get it done without me having to watch, but I wanted to make sure I gave you guys the segue here and let you know what's going on. So if I'm being completely honest, the work's already done and it turned out pretty good, but let's hear from Tiny to see how the whole thing went. Obviously you did all the work and I wasn't here for any of it. So it's yeah, that was this. great. You just left me here all alone. Cried a little bit, Tyler and I. No, it went good. Uh, everything mostly according to plan. The front sway bar was a little bit more work than I was anticipating, but we got through it and uh, now it's on there. And the rear end went smoothly. What should people know going into this if they're gonna go ahead and install these themselves in their car? I mean, what kind of warnings would you give somebody? Yeah, the, the front sway bar is a, it took me three hours, I think, which was a little bit, I could have shortened that if I uh, would have planned a little bit better, but it was it was intense to say the least. Like it, it's pretty involved and there's a lot you gotta take apart. And I mean, the whole front subframe has to come out. And with that comes some other like challenges that you're gonna run into, like the rear motor mount, isn't the most fun to get out. It's kind of a tight space. Uh, you have to take that out to get the rack loosened. Like there's just little things in getting that out that's uh, not the most fun. But it's it's a brutal job, but it's definitely doable. Um, so just know that. Yeah, at first were you just trying to do it without having to remove the subframe? Yeah, I mean, trying to avoid that. Sometimes you can you can snake them out, and uh, this just isn't doable. Can't do the old snake method. So uh, definitely had to. Like the subframe basically just dangles from the control arms and then you snake it out the back. Okay. Instead of normally you could cut, like with the rear, how we kind of just shimmied it out. Sometimes you can do that in the front, but with there being so much stuff kind of compacted in a small subframe in the front, it just wasn't possible. And just the way that it's bent, so.
got these on here, real happy. These bushings were like as blown out as yeah. they could be. So yeah. good thing that we got those on there and the, the sway bar should help out a good amount. And they're adjustable. There's, you got some uh, different stiffness levels. There's three different levels you can choose from middle being what you would expect the middle ground. So that's where we left it for now until we decide to change it. It is what it is, but. And then obviously like on our car, we like our rear subframe and front subframe too is also just a little bit rusty. I mean, is, is there anything around that that people should be conscious of if their I mean, car is also in this like similar condition? As long as there's not like holes in it and stuff's falling off, like, right. you, like you got ears for mounts falling off, you're not right. really in bad shape. I mean, these things are built to last a really long time, but it never hurts, especially if you're trying to have a good looking build underneath, not only on the outside, but on the underside. It's never a bad idea to have these pulled off and have them powder coated and cleaned up a little bit. It, it definitely never hurts. Yeah, that's definitely on my list for sure at some point here, but we'll see when that, we get around to that one. Otherwise, I mean, anything else, you, any other sage advice you have for people going into this? What would you tell your best friend if he was about to go do this? Have fun? Yeah, it's, it's not too bad. Once you can tackle the front subframe, like there's nothing that's gonna come out and surprise you. I, all the bolts are exactly where you'd expect them to be. There's not some weird size you have to use or some weird tool you need. Everything comes out as expected. It's a good kit, like all this stuff is, they're all good parts that are worth replacing and like definitely an, an upgrade over stock. So yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not too bad once you get over the fact that you're gonna have a decent amount of time invested. You need the time, but it's not necessarily uh, something that's hard or requires a ton of like special skills or tools. we know but for people who don't know what are some of the track benefits to doing this stuff so any roll bar sway bar it's the same piece just a different term so when you call it an any roll bar it kind of gives you a better understanding of what it's doing it's keeping the body of the car level as the suspension travels through a corner so being able to fine tune that over stock is a huge advantage because depending on the track condition the rest of your suspension setup, this will dictate how you want to run your sway bar and if you need it stiffer or if you need it looser to give you a little bit more roll or a little bit more squat, you can do that by adjusting this. Okay. Um, so that's the big advantage there is you have the adjustability. The ability to adjust any of your angles on the fly when you're at the track is a huge, like it's, it's critical and making that easier on yourself. So like these from the factory use a concentric bolt and nut setup and being able to just have a jam nut and a like a telescoping rod makes adjustments 
so much easier. So when you're on the ground at the track with your plates, trying to get everything square, this is gonna be a whole heck of a lot easier to just unbolt the jam nuts and twist with your hands, or if need be, use the, uh, the flat here and adjust those out to get whatever angle or whatever setup you need for that track is gonna make your life a lot easier. So you feel a little bit more uh, thick. Yeah. They're probably too. a bit more rigid too for you know bumping some curbs or whatever you run into. Maybe they'll hold up a little <laughs> bit better than stock. But, but yeah, they're they're a sturdy piece and then yeah, everything on here is adjustable. That's the main takeaway is you can tune it to your liking or your need. Right on. All right, cool. Well, that's all I had for you. All right, you guys, so there you have it for today's episode. I mean, the craziest thing about this to me is that these coincidentally are the exact same color as the Olin's coilovers. So really cool, I'm really pleased with how this is. I'm super excited to eventually get the car back out on the track. We've got snow here now in Minnesota already, so probably not gonna happen for a while unless we travel somewhere, who knows, that could be in the future. But if you guys are interested in getting any of these parts for your build, go ahead, check out the links down in the description. As always, be sure that you like, comment, and subscribe on this video for future content just like this. And if you have suggestions on what else we should do to this car, I know we've got a few things planned still, let us know as well. We've definitely, like I said, got a few plans, but love to hear from you guys. Anyways, that's where we're gonna end it today. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.